Out of politics, seven months into his presidency, Donald Trump has relearned the art of the deal, it seems. But to the shock of Republicans, it was with Democratic leadership. In a landmark Oval Office meeting, the president agreed to a plan bringing Hurricane Harvey relief, a three-month debt ceiling increase, and three-month continuing resolution to fund the government, going against Republican leadership and his own Treasury Secretary. It gives Democrats leverage, forcing two unpopular debt ceiling votes by year's end instead of just one. It all began early in the day. The Democrats put out a news release calling for a three-month funding bill, which got an icy reception from Paul Ryan. The Democrats now say they'll only support a three-month increase in the debt ceiling. It seems like they're trying to extract something I, I, from the dreamer. I think that's a ridiculous idea. I hope that they don't mean that. Let's just think about this. We've got all this devastation in Texas. We've got another unprecedented hurricane hitting, about to hit Florida. And they want to play politics with a debt ceiling? I think that's ridiculous and disgraceful. And to play politics with a debt ceiling, like, like, like Schumer and Pelosi apparently are doing, I don't think is a good idea. Inside the Oval Office, Republicans argued first for an 18-month debt limit hike until after the midterm elections. Then they offered six months, which the Democrats panned. Steve Mnuchin, who was also present, argued in favor of a longer-term debt limit extension. But the president cut him off and sided with Democrats. Multiple sources with knowledge of the meeting said Mitch McConnell insisted they also add a three-month government funding bill. An aide tells NBC News that toward the end of the meeting, Ivanka Trump entered the Oval Office to say hello, and the meeting careened off topic. Republican leaders were said to be visibly annoyed by her presence. A White House aide says the president invited Ivanka to the meeting to discuss her child tax credit proposal and that it was quick and productive. But by the end of the meeting, an agreement had been reached. Ben Dominic of The Federalist wrote, the pivot is real and it's spectacular. Here's what all sides said afterward. We had a great meeting with Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and uh, the whole Republican leadership group. And I'll tell you what, we walked out of there, Mitch and Paul and everybody, Kevin, and we walked out and everybody was happy. Not too happy, because you can never be too happy, but they were happy enough. So it was a really good moment of some bipartisanship and getting things done, no one's standing in their corner. We Democrats, you know, some people urged us, don't help at all, particularly on debt ceiling. But we thought for the good of the country, we should make the right offer. The President and the Senate and House Democratic leadership agreed to a three-month uh, continuing resolution and a debt ceiling into December. Were you surprised that the president sided with Democrats and against the longer-term measure that Republicans were seeking? Look, the president can speak for himself, but his feeling was that we needed to come together to not create a picture of divisiveness at a time of genuine national crisis, and that was the rationale. So, Joe, break down what happened. It, it feels like kind of very public um, in terms of um, the Republicans and what they went through in that meeting yesterday, and then the Ivanka element. Um, or, or is there anything to break down there? I mean, there's a lot to break down. I mean, you saw Donald Trump. Uh, he, he was able to do something he hasn't been able to do for the first seven and a half months of his presidency. He was able to go out in front of cameras and say, this is what I've got done. Mm -hmm. And not insignificant things. We've averted a debt crisis where the United States defaults on its debts for another three months. There's a lot of chaos this fall. People said this was going to be bloody. Well, guess what? We've pushed this off till the end of the year, and it'll get done then, too. We also have funded Hurricane Harvey. Uh, and I'm sure that that was a, a, a real driver for this final decision. but. Just look at it. Uh, Mark Halperin, Do you, you said it yesterday, Donald Trump's inbox is massive. He has so much to do. And he's looking around the room and he's looking at Mike Pence. Everybody said, oh, Mike Pence is great on Capitol Hill. No, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't know how to work the Senate. He was never a senator. 
And then you've got Paul Ryan sitting next to him and Mitch McConnell, two guys that have led a Republican caucus that have said for seven years if they were in power, they were going to repeal Obamacare. They failed at repealing Obamacare. In seven and a half months, they failed at passing a lot of other things. And yes, Donald Trump helped them spectacularly in failing. But it's like I've been saying all along, you're never going to pass things as long as Mark Meadows and a small faction says, it's got to be perfect or we're going to blow it up. Well, anybody that's in the White House can say, okay, we'll blow it up all you want to. We're going to roll you and we'll find, as I've said for seven months, 40 or 50 Democrats. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get the deal done. I mean, he has to get Harvey done. He had to get the debt ceiling issue done. He's got another Category 5 storming towards uh, Miami and South Florida. So that's going to be another relief bill he has to get done. And he's got all of these other things in front of him. There's no way he was going to get it done with the Republicans. So, yes, this is horrible for the conservative movement. This is horrible for the Republican Party. But it's good for Democrats. It's good for Donald Trump. And <clears throat> I guarantee you, most Americans like the fact that Washington finally got something done yesterday. Mark. What say you, Mark Halpern? A NBC shouldn't pay me today because I have no idea what this is means and what this is about. It's it's one of the strangest <coughs> things I've seen in in not just in Donald Trump's time, but for any president. See, I'm with I, you. I, I agree, Joe, that in the short term, not having a debt ceiling crisis, dealing with the, the disaster relief, I agree that that's a short term thing of governing that a lot of people will like. But come December, which is not that far away, if the president has to make a deal on, on DACA, if the president has to make a deal on funding the Affordable Care Act, if Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi decide to start making more demands, and if all this deal crowds out any possibility of tax reform, I'm not sure politically or substantively come January the president's going to be in a particularly strong position. But, but, yeah. But, but, but Mark, <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, they can pay me double because yesterday I said that you Trump did. was going to deal did. with Democrats. You were, you so, were, you so were like NBC Karnak. Can, <clears throat> like Karnak. And by the way, if Donald Trump, if the cost of Donald Trump getting the debt ceiling taken care of in December is having a press conference with 350 legislators standing behind him to do uh, for, for DACA and do for Dreamers what Barack Obama wasn't able to do and pass a law and have him sign that law, then Donald Trump will take that deal. Now listen, this all assumes that Donald Trump's pivot is going to last longer than 12 hours. I'm right. sure he'll watch Fox and Friends this morning and tweet and destroy any gains that he made yesterday afternoon uh, because they'll be attacking Mont on Fox and Friends probably. Right. But if he sees this through, then yes, he would love to sign DACA and be able to do something Barack Obama couldn't do. And if it's Pelosi and Schumer there with him, what does he care? If, if he doesn't he, care about the Republican build, Party, and he never a, did. If he can build a long-term coalition that way, I agree with you that a lot of the things he cares about, infrastructure, even health care, immigration, he can get a lot done with that kind of coalition. But he's now left for the short term no happiness on the right and can he is he willing to, to build a sustained coalition with anger from fox breitbart talk radio i don't know if he is but but it certainly opens well, up a, new, a, a lot whole of new world of possibility willie geist a lot of a lot of those people were actually apologizing for donald trump and in one of the most spectacular rhetorical twists are now actually blaming this all on paul ryan I mean, we, we all saw some clips last night that Chuck yes. Schumer and, and Nancy Pelosi became the hate heroes, and this was all poor Paul Ryan's <laughs> fault. I mean, Paul Ryan's oh more upset Lord. about this, I'm yeah. sure, than, than anybody. So that's another thing, Willie. They're go Trumpers are going to follow Donald Trump no matter what he does. So if he's doing deals with Democrats when he needs to do deals with Democrats, They'll still be with him, and he may pick up one or two people in the middle. You know, when you look at that photograph right there that we just had of Chuck Schumer and the President of the United States, an incredible photograph, 
Donald Trump actually looks like Schumer's jabbing a finger in his face, but we know what's happening there. Trump's going in for the hug, a guy he's known around New York a little bit. We did a deal together. Heidi Prisbilla, there is an ease that the president has with Chuck Schumer that he does not have with Mitch McConnell. That's just a fact. And you can imagine being sitting in the Oval Office if you're Mitch McConnell or Paul Ryan or the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin thinking this is a photo op and it's all going to go one way. And having the tables turned on you completely, and if you talk to people around the White House, they say they too were surprised by the president's decision inside the room. They came out and said all the right things afterward on TV, but they were surprised that the president did. But this is the man that they signed up with. This is the man who makes a deal because he's in the room and he likes Chuck Schumer. He got the headlines he wants today. If you look at the newspapers, the president's going to be very happy. Trump reaches across the aisle, says one. Another says Trump strikes a deal. This is what Donald Trump craves. He got a deal done. Exactly, and I think that's exactly what this is. It's just transactional. He was seeing that he was not getting deals with the Republican leadership. Uh, it's been kind of devastating in terms of health care and the rest of his agenda items that he's been unable to accomplish. Um, and in this case, uh, the Democrats were able to offer him a way out. And I dare to say that I think Joe is right that even Trumpers uh, are going to like this because many of them are not doing the, what I call the Tea Party two-step of just wanting to kind of drown government in the bathtub. They want to see government actually work better, and that's what this is going to do. Even if it puts his party in a bad position going forward, we will find out whether Trump is able to go ahead and, and cut those deals with Democrats on DACA, and it's all up to him because there's just one thing that could kind of blow that up, and that is whether the president chooses to throw the wall into all of this. There is a deal to be had on DACA with maybe some minor increases in border security. Um, cutting a deal by the end of the year on DACA wouldn't be too hard. The president will decide that, whether he wants to throw the wall into it and blow things up. Mike Barnacle. You know, uh, with all due respect to Mark Halpern, who I think is uh, in the middle of concussion syndrome. Well, yeah. You know. uh, why is anyone really and truly surprised about what, is, what has happened here? I mean, the, the President of the United States is a man of the moment. Yeah. He lives for the headline. He lives for the cable hour. He lives for the win. The personal is political. The political is personal. He will do anything to achieve even a momentary win. This is much more than a momentary win. And, and, and you're right, Willie. I mean, he, he just has an affinity for Chuck Schumer that he's never going to have for Mitch McConnell. Jim, you've, you've covered the Hill right. for years. I mean, am I off base in, in that estimation? Yeah, I mean, listen, he was rattled by the fact that the markets were rattled. He didn't want to deal with these complex issues. Listen, most people watching this show roll their eyes when you talk about continuing resolutions and debt limits. What's interesting to me is he is setting up a real test about whether or not he has a magical sway over Republican voters. Because yeah. you're looking at, by the end of this year, the Republican accomplishments legislatively could be that you spent more money, you raised the debt limit, you did on DACA what President Obama couldn't do, and you propped up Obamacare by putting more money into it without repealing it. I, I can't think of a single conservative voter who a year ago would say, yeah, that's what I'm voting for. And Meadows and these guys in the Freedom Caucus, they're the real deal in terms of fiscal conservatism. So, they were elected in those elections heading into 2010 saying we're going to reduce the size of government and we're going to use these fights to do it. This is devastation for them. So, and it really Joe, does. he is a man of the moment, though, and that is one way of putting it. I mean, nothing necessarily is what it appears to be. Except this isn't a tweet. Right. This isn't an interview where he rambles off and walks into the forest right. and uh, rhetorically and saying bizarre things. He has averted, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not praising him here. I'm right. just stating the facts that Americans will see, and we need to get out of our bubble and see it ourselves. Americans will see this as Washington finally getting something done. They're going yeah. to provide relief for Harvey, and they're going to do it quickly, and it's going to be significant. He has averted a debt crisis, which will lead him to doing something that 80% of Americans want him to do, mm -hmm. which is attach DACA to, uh, to, to an, a long-term extension. So these are things that the American people will applaud. Will Mark Meadows applaud it? No. But Donald Trump has tried working with Mark Meadows. 
Uh, Jim Vanda, hi. Donald Trump has tried working with Mitch McConnell. Donald Trump has tried working with Paul Ryan. And uh, what has it got him? Wait, 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 it's wait, got wait, him. Wait, 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 wait. Vanda, hi. Hold on one second. Yes, hold on. He hasn't tried working with those people. I don't think that he's done. I mean, look at after under this picture of Trump and Schumer in their whatever this embrace is. Cohn, now seen as unlikely pick to be Fed chair. I mean, we're talking about somebody who says one thing one day and right. the next day or the next minute, it completely changes. So now take it I'm to Jim Vandehei. I'm talking about high. votes. I'm just trying to, yeah. okay, okay, but you know what? No, 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 but I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking about votes. You had Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan, and I'm not knocking Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan because Donald Trump made their lives a living and breathing hell legislatively, right? But they kept saying, just deal with us. We're going to get the votes. We can repeal Obamacare. They didn't do it. In fact, nothing's happened, and it's not really their fault. It's pretty incredible how much Mitch McConnell was able to get done, despite the fact the president was getting in his way with a health care bill that only 18 percent of Americans supported. My point is this, though, Jim. Paul Ryan can't control his own caucus. Uh, Mitch McConnell can't guarantee that he's going to get uh, 50 votes for the president. They haven't been able to do it for seven and a half months. So Donald Trump said, I'm going to get something done. And he dealt with the Democrats, something that we've said all along uh, for years. Republicans need to deal with Democrats. Democrats need to deal with Republicans. That's exactly what he did. Will it hurt him with conservatives and Republicans in his base? Perhaps. But for Americans, they're going to be glad that things got done. It were, I agree with you short term. Certainly it's what he had to do to keep the market settled and get rid of some pretty complex issues. Long term, the idea, at least based on everything I've heard or seen over the last year, that Democrats are going to work with a guy they consider kryptonite, he could not be more radioactive with Democrats. So the only way that that governing strategy would work is if he really moved radically to the far left, which I don't think he's prepared to do. And so, yes, it works in the short term. It might work on DACA, but on those other topics, it's hard to see working. And you are there. If you have all party rule, to me, you're still in a much better position figuring out how do you leverage the fact that you control the whole stinking government and you are putting there with a mandate to change government and but he hasn't they, been but able to Jim, do it in a way that they don't control the whole they don't control the entire they government. They control a big old chunk and of they it. They don't control the in, in, entire government because Paul Ryan has to take uh, uh, meetings with uh, with with members of the Freedom Caucus every 12 and a half hours because they're upset about something else. Everybody's a free agent there. Everybody, you, you, you and I know it. Back when we were there, you could still punish somebody if they went off the reservation. Now everybody's a free agent. So Paul, it's not Paul Ryan's fault that the world's changed. Boehner couldn't handle him either. It's not Mitch McConnell's fault that the world's changed. You insult uh, Lisa Murkowski, Lisa Murkowski's not going with you. Uh, and Mitch McConnell can't do anything about that. But. If the world's free agent, you, you have to go out there. I've said it from day one. His majority is 180 Republicans and 40 Democrats. If that has to be 180 Democrats and 40 Republicans, as Mark Halpern has said, what will get Donald Trump at the end will be getting nothing done. He's going to have to work with Democrats if he wants to get, get something done. That's just the political reality in Washington, D.C. We shall see. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.